The Book of Lamentations is a collection of poetic laments about the destruction of Jerusalem. In the Hebrew Bible, it appears in the Ketuvim, or the writings, beside the Son of Sons, the Book of Ruth, Ecclesiastes, and the Book of Esther, the group of which is known as the Megalotes, or the Five Scrolls. In the Christian Old Testament, it follows the Book of Jeremiah, as the prophet Jeremiah is its traditional author. The book is partly a traditional city lament, mourning the desertion of the city by God, its destruction, and the ultimate return of its people, and partly a funeral dirge in which the bereaved be wells and addresses the dead. The tone is bleak, God does not speak, the degree of suffering is presented as undeserved, and expectations of future redemption are minimal. The book consists of five separate poems, the first four are written as acrostics. Chapters 1, 2, and 4 each have 22 verses, corresponding to the 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. The first lines beginning with the first letter of the alphabet, the second with the second letter, and so on. Chapter 3 has 66 verses, so that each letter begins three lines. And the fifth poem is not an acrostic at all, but still has 22 lines. Lamentations has traditionally been ascribed to Jeremiah, probably on the grounds of the reference in 2 Chronicles 35-25 to the prophet composing a lament on the death of King Josiah. But there's no reference to Josiah in the book and no reason to connect it to Jeremiah. The language fits an exilic date, sometime between 586 and 520 BC, and the poems probably originated from Judeans who remained in the land. Scholars are divided over whether they are the work of one or multiple authors. One clue pointing to multiple authors is that the gender and situation of the first-person witness changes. The narration is feminine in the first and second lamentation, and masculine in the third, while the fourth and fifth are eyewitness reports of Jerusalem's destruction. Conversely, the similarities of style, vocabulary, and theological outlook, as well as a uniform historical setting, are arguments for one author. In the first chapter, the city sits as a desolate weeping widow, overcome with miseries. How lonely sits the city! Judah has gone into exile, O Lord. I am despised. Is any sorrow like mine? There is no one to comfort me. In chapter 2, these miseries are described in connection with national sins and acts of God. The Lord has not pitied Jacob. He has abandoned his sanctuary. My eyes fail with tears. Young and old lie slaughtered in the streets. Chapter 3 speaks of hope for the people of God. The chastisement would only be for their good. A better day would dawn for them. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I will remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is good to those whose hope is in him, to the one who seeks him. It is good to wait quietly for the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man to bear the yoke while he is young. For no one is cast off by the Lord forever. Though he brings grief, he will show compassion. So great is his unfailing love, for he does not willingly bring affliction or grief to anyone. Chapter 4 laments the ruin and desolation of the city and temple, but traces it to the people's sins. Those who once ate delicacies are destitute in the streets. Those brought up in royal purple now lie on ash heaps. The punishment of my people is greater than that of Sodom, which was overthrown in a moment, without a hand turned to help her. Those killed by the sword are better off than those who die of famine. Racked with hunger, they waste away for lack of food from the field. With their own hands, compassionate women have cooked their own children, who became food when my people were destroyed. But it happened because of the sins of her prophets and the iniquities of her priests, who shed within her the blood of the righteous. Chapter 5 is a prayer that Zion's reproach may be taken away in the repentance and recovery of the people. You, Lord, reign forever. Your throne endures from generation to generation. Why do you always forget us? Why do you forsake us so long? Restore us to yourself, Lord, that we may return. Renew our days as of old, unless you have utterly rejected us and are angry with us beyond measure.